memories and moments, handshakes on behalf of others, discussions about installing the Paragon's Call. He had spoken a bit about wanting to use the Paragon's Call as leverage to better his position, his political position in the city, and the glimpses that you see seem to back that up. You do also see him signing ledgers, shipping approvals, uh, occasionally paying off individuals to enable the movement of certain goods through the city. If he knows anything about the Apogee Solstice. Apogee Solstice. You don't glean anything that fills in that position. You can sense in him a curiosity, but also an understanding of safety in ignorance Mm -hmm. about certain things, and certain curious questions that are met with dagger-like stares from individuals that he deals with, specifically Orohan. Does he know where the uh, the supplies are coming from? Does he know who it is that's sending the shipments before that he passes them along? You recall meetings with figures from across the sea, coastal townships, enabling part of the Treshi House uh, shipment fleet to take on a few extra cargo pieces every now and then, over a few years. No recognizable names coming to his mind or no. identifying traits to figures or anything like that? But she's here. I'm talking about the people sending yeah. from oh, the yeah. Dratus. No, they were largely representatives of. Mm-hmm. They seemed to be messengers. And everything was kept very separate, very piecemeal, very divided intentionally, so it was being hard to trace and track. But once shipments were brought across, uh, once these deals were made, you see moments of shipments arriving in Drusar, Treshi handling the arrivals and where the cargo would be distributed throughout the city, while himself not usually one so heavily invested or involved in this aspect of his family's business, um, definitely stepped up to take care of some of these ledgers himself personally. And the name that gets signed on many of these ledgers for specific pieces of cargo, because it's a name you're familiar with, is Hexen. The other thing that creeps behind all this is a deep-seated fear of the people he's been working with. You see flashes of him feeling like he is rushing to be protected, fleeing the city, coming to Basarus, looking to the Paragon's call for protection, for an opportunity to correct, repair, and you see him in his little, well-decorated, comfortable prison cell. You see flashes of tense conversations, of finishing the final shipments. Promises that once the once the final bits of goods are complete and delivered, then the Paragon's Call would be happy to correct this unfortunate public blowout. And through it all, this sense that he knew that there was something behind Odahan's eyes. That he was worried that that was going to be his final resting place. And a weird sense of relief that he's on this ship and heading back to Drusar. Right, playing in big leagues. Mm-hmm. Remember, the group, group of us were making our way broken into the first floor. We were making our way. Mm-hmm. Never live that down. Uh, making our way upstairs. Um, Zealand had opened the door, gotten through the first set of locks. Uh, Sally was heading forth, heading first out, and Norman, I, I, I remember. I remember seeing, it's all a flash, I saw one of those crates thrown through a window for everyone panicking. Before you were thrown through the window, you saw the crate, what happened between there? I, uh, I, I, um, and uh, we got caught. Um, From Ashton's point of view, you can feel the, uh, the weight of the hammer in one hand as it's pulled behind, the care in stepping through quietly. You flash to that moment as Ashton's trying to recall what happened, and you see the crates. You see uh, two of them underneath a blanket pulled aside. Uh, Same shape, same make, same markings, though different places. Uh, You see uh, one of them open. You see Ashton holding a crystal vial in his hand, the same ones that you've recovered. Right as you see the ground begin to glow a bright red orange, Ashton glances down and you see these runic sigils begin to appear around it before this high-pitched whine begins to streak through. And a detonation that flashes to white. Yep. You see as the white begins to fade, back to color, 
is a glance up at the sky, stars, and a balcony falling away to darkness. We've seen that before. Mm -hmm. He said there was time missing at, at her house. You spent time there? There was falling out the balcony. It, it, it doesn't add up. And then there was the trip home and there was whatever happened. I don't know how any of it happened. And I keep trying to think about what happened and it's just so jumbled. Anything before he woke up with Milo? A different hammer, but it was a, it was a hammer. It was a hammer. It was a different hammer. Yeah. yeah. I will read the voices of other people screaming, go, 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 run, it's over. He's dead, leave him. And you see bits of the road, you see alleys, and hear the dragging against dirt. You hear the echo of Milo's voice, familiar, saying, come on, come on, come on, come on. Uh, takes over and you pull back and there is light, bright light, hurting your eyes. This And it's an overhead directed hooded lantern of some kind. It's at the top of Milo's table. Mm -hmm. Bleary eyed, blood spattered, and unable to move. And Milo comes in, out of focus, looking overhead. Large glasses over there, looking about nervously. <sighs> Even rubbing them, cleaning their hands. Firing up what looks to be, and you've seen it around the house, like a small forge that they keep. Um, and you come back in, and with the heartbeat, you feel a heartbeat. It's weird, you've never felt a heartbeat before, but in your chest you feel the warmth is going cold, and the heartbeat is slowing, and you hear Milo's voice saying, no, 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 I don't know. Uh, takes and begins pouring this bright, warm material, this almost syrupy, heated glass past the head. It hisses and steams upon impact. Searing hot in the side of the head. The pain is almost too numb to be pain. It's just sensation. As the steam fills the blackness again, and you hear Milo going, No, 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 I. Once this reaches and pulls something from the limp grasp of Ashton's hand as it drops out of frame, your hand, and that same vial, that same gray vial. Pulls the top off and just pours it into the wound as well. The steam in the glass begins to turn from a bright white steam to a dark gray, weird, tar like amalgam that seems to turn to a floating, gravityless liquid before the steam evaporates. And Milo looks entranced to the right of your vision. Darkness begins to reverse. Into the night sky, and as you can appear in focus, you push through the glass and feel like you're just kind of lost in an expanse of infinity. You see purple and green clouds swirling. You look down, hang there, motionless shake and shift of color, and you see Bing laughing. You see Ashton fully armored, clutching what looks like the bloody body of someone as he crushes them in their head and throws them apart. You see Ashton destitute on the side of the street. You see them starving and asking for help. You see Ashton on a ship in the distance, pushing beyond a fog bank to unforeseen shores. You see Ashton wearing robes and some sort of a senate seat speaking to the public, shh, you see so many different Ashtons, different, all held by a singular thread, but none of them the one you know begins to bleed and bleed a lot. He's playing operating table, right? You're staring as the one in the operating table at this oh, moment. Geez. And you see Milo smile and kind of clap and cheer 
and close your eyes. Your hands, and you have Ashton's hands. Oh, wow. Feels kind of nice, though. Concentrate on my... his head, and you see the eyes are focused, but at a thousand yard stare, meaning they are, they are driven, but they're not focusing on anything in particular. You kind of look towards the pupils, and they are dilated. Um, you glance past the crystal structure in the side of his head, and as you look in, you can see gentle sparks just kind of like the tiniest fireworks just going off. Which is normal. You can see two small shadowy shapes. Shut Weird. the fuck up! Little oh. tiny tiny ass. What? Weird snow globe. What? <laughs> What are you this talking is so about? Fucking weird. This is weird. You guys are like, you guys are getting weird. Psychic shit gets weird. Spotless mind. Fuck look up. It, look it. Look it. Huh. Do you see this? Do you see those? Orm, come here. The little, Honey, I shrunk the, the kids. Flex? Do you see these two little flecks? <laughs> what the shit? I see the little sparks. They look like little people. Don't I'm eat sure, me, I'm dear. Just sort of flex. It doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good to flex. Nope. Oh, it's disappointing. <laughs> I'm yeah. gonna try to run. Mm -hmm. Does that feel okay? Everything hurts. Everything Always. hurts. Yeah. Oh, well, anywhere, all anywhere with yeah. It's just yeah. It all. It, none of it feels good. Is none it still, of it feels is good. It still no. By the way. Uh. No. Oh, shit. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To his point, there is strength there. Yeah. But with the strength comes pain. Mm. Continuous. Pain. Does. But there is pain. There is pain. But there is strength. Oh. <clears throat> are pulled away from each other, your arms reaching out as you both vanish into opposite darkness. Uh -oh. And at once, <clears throat> you're back in yourselves. Ashen, you begin coughing profusely and catching the blood from your face. <clears throat> I'm awake, too. <clears throat> breathe. You're all breathe. back in your Oh, okay. <clears throat> Slow down, breathe. <clears throat> breathe. Uh, I will I lock that in somebody's. Your your. Ends up into this. Yeah. What is that? Ashton, I saw like every possibility of your life. What does that? What the fuck does that mean? I think you have. You know, Milo put something in you that. Obviously. They didn't understand. You put one of these. Yeah in your head and it and it connected you to some sort of pathway some sort of river of distance i mean it's a potion of possibilities right i mean fuck me mm -hmm. but you know I, I don't know what i am or, or where i've been or who made me but everyone keeps telling me i'm special and I think you might be too. You're connected to something much bigger than yourself. And if you could learn to use it, harness it, master it, maybe, maybe it could help you. Maybe it could help you. Oh my gosh. I mean, what if you have access to this potion all the time? What if? At this, I really did. Hexum? Where everything started to jumble, I thought maybe, maybe she knew. Maybe it just wasn't random fucking chaos, but it is very much random fucking It doesn't chaos. seem like it's random or chaos, it just seems like it's potential. Like it's... I'm not sure what the difference is. Well... I fell, I broke open, someone poured this shit into me, and now this? Sure. Sure. That's clearly potential. When I saw all the endless possibilities of his life, <clears throat> was it Ashton as, as they currently are? Or was it like with no <clears throat> damage? Damage, exactly. Damaged? Some were not. Some had normal skin. <clears throat> Like normal skin, normal skin? Like, like human mean, like, flesh. Like human skin? Every yep. permutation. <laughs> Discussion. Shh, 
this bright ah, green light ah. suddenly emits from the left-hand side. One of these thicker tree trunks, you watch as a singular ah. opening, like an oval gateway begins to tear through oh, okay. the bark. You hear the sound of the tree kind of creaking as it pushes apart and open as you're stepping through. This collection of extended antlers that bow down and open up as you see the flowing of long red hair that drifts past shoulders almost to the mid-back. A light orange dress that fades to a dark red burgundy. A mantle of thousands and thousands of autumn leaves that themselves drag across the ground behind as she steps through. A half-elven woman looking a bit frazzled but smiling. Hail to the Tempest. Thank you for coming. I'm sorry to pull you away from what I'm sure is important, but we didn't know what else to do. Our friend fell, and she's special. She's someone that you cross paths with once in Whitestone. Um, gently lay her on the ground, and I just start to open. God. As you start to, I'm holding you. Well, hi, I'm Keyless. <laughs> oh, hi. oh, hi. Yeah, hi. We've had a weird couple days. Sorry. I can see it on Hi. your faces, and I've been there. We're we're Bell's Hells. We're like a, an adventuring party. Um, sometimes people hire us for jobs or pay us to do things, but we're we're trying to do good in the world. It's not something that you might understand, but it's it's what we've been doing lately. Sounds vaguely familiar. And she turns and takes her staff and points it towards the tree that she exited from. The tree once again tears open with that loud, humming, but strangely warm sensation. And as it pulls open on the opposite side of this entryway, you see this beautiful open courtyard. You see numerous buildings across the way, along the streets. The roofs extended almost like reworked long disused ships. You see trees and hills, and above that, on a hill, a castle, and the gentle falling of golden leaves that pass beyond the entryway. As you said, we haven't much time. <laughs> 